It's a clear, starry night in the realm of Gyron. Brock Skyfire stands at the helm of his ironclad, leading the Aethergold Acquisitions team of Caradron overlords back from a successful prospecting run, feeling at peace with his hull. But peace never lasts. A meteor shower pierces through the armor of the prospecting fleet, sending twisted metal and screaming Duradin plummeting into the forest below. Ilaria Brightsoul of the Stranglerout Barrow marshals her forces of Norlroot Sylvaneth, ready to repel the scrambling survivors from her realm. Both sides ready for battle in the chaos following the crash. The path to glory starts now. Alright, welcome to Phantom Tabletop Gaming. My name is Mason, this is Eddie, and we are thrilled for today. This is episode one of our new Path to Glory campaign using Age of Sigmar 3rd edition rules. Yes, uh, which we've had a little bit of experience with, but not a lot. So if we mess anything up, bear with us. Tell us about it in the comments, we'll fix it, I promise you. And uh, we have 600 points, let's get you introduced to our faction. Okay, Mason, here, here is my 600 points, well, 585, of Barrack, Nar, Caradron Overlords. Um, so I started for my HQ unit. I chose to do the Aether Chemist. Um, and then with him, I've got three Indrin Riggers. Um, and then over here, I've got my battle line, which would be uh, 10 Arcanaut Company. Uh, these guys are not great, but they are battle line and they are cheap. Um, and then over here, I have got a reinforced unit of Thunderers, um, five with rivals, and then a special weapons team. And uh, I'm really counting on these guys to bring the firepower and really do the heavy lifting for this list. Um, I chose not to bring a gunboat just because it was expensive, and I wanted to make sure I had model counts to hold objectives and do that kind of thing. Probably a mistake, but we will see once we get into the game. All right, Eddie here, and today I'm bringing my Sylvaneth, my Gnarl Root Sylvaneth to be specific. Um, and uh, to start with, I'm going to bring my Kurnoff Hunters here with some bows. Uh, I think it's hopefully some, some serious firepower to these guys. I think I can really do some work. Uh, and then my Tree Lord uh, is for my monster, and I know the Tree Lord can do work. I also know that he brackets really easily and can be uh, handled easily if I, if I take a lot of damage really early. So we're going to see if I can't uh, use these last two units really to do most of the work here. Uh, and then my Branch Witch is going to be my Warlord and Leader. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, just usual, trying to you know, cast spells and, and get the um, Donar Root ability to heal stuff up. So, uh, And then, of course, a 10-man unit of Dryads to finish it up. Uh, this here uh, is going to be the army that's exactly 600 points, and we'll see how it works. So see you in the game. All right, now that you have been introduced to our warbands, we are good to get started. So we have randomly selected a mission from the Path to Glory mission pack, um, and we got Sudden Death, which basically means one of us is an invader in the other's territory. So one of our forces is known as the invader, the other is uh, the custodians. Um, for this battle, uh, the Aether Gold Acquisitions crew, uh, piloted by me, are the invaders, and uh, Eddie's Norwoot Vanguard is going to be the uh, custodian. So uh, basically we are deploying in these two zones in this quadrant of the table is where I'll, de I'll deploy and in this quadrant is where Eddie uh, and his Sylvaneth will deploy. Um, and basically at the end of each round, so not each player's turn, but at the end of each battle round, we score one victory point for each quadrant we have more models wholly within than our opponent. Um, so at the end of five battle rounds, the player with the most points scores a major victory. If the score is tied, the custodian scores a minor victory. So uh, ties go to Eddie in this case. So for my quest for today, I chose Defend the Homeland. And basically for every unit I have wholly within my deployment zone at the end of the battle, I get one quest point. Um, after I get to three quest points, I get ten glory points. And I chose this one uh, because I wanted to try to rapidly expand my uh, available units that I can have. And uh, ten glory points seems like a good amount. So we're going to give it a try. I can also, um, at the end of every battle that I take place in, I can spend one glory point to add another point to my quest tracker. All right, Eddie here. And for my quest, I chose Scout Fertile Lands. Uh, so at the end of the bath to path to glory battles in the battle, if I have any of my units that are wholly four inches of the battle edge and outside of my starting territory, um, I will be able to get the, achieve this. And if I don't, I can spend one glory point at the end of the match uh, to achieve it. And then when I, when I do achieve it, I'll be able to make two exploration rolls on the aftermath sequence uh, instead of one. So uh, just trying to get some more lands, trying to hopefully open up some slots because because I know that uh, Sylvaneth were very reliant on having monsters and wizards, and so 
I need slots for when I upgrade in the future. So I'm just trying to prepare for that. So you might hear us refer to other things that happen. This is actually our second go at recording this video. Uh, we got about most of the way through recording the first time and we realized we had a camera malfunction. So uh, you might hear some references to some erstwhile things that haven't actually happened in YouTube world. Um, but we really want to bring you guys this video. We're super excited about Path to Glory and uh, we really appreciate all of you guys watching. Um, especially shout out to our number one fan, John Clock. We really appreciate you and love you, buddy. Um, so uh, other things of note in this battle are we rolled some mysterious terrain features. So this church here got deadly. So any model that finishes a move or a setup uh, within one inch of it has to roll a D6. And on a one, that unit takes D3 mortal wounds. Uh, this piece of terrain right here actually got the same exact um, terrain effect. It's also deadly. Uh, probably won't come up as much as the church, but, you know, Important to note, this feature right here, I believe the Sylvaneth has something special with this one, right? Uh, yeah, we can pick one piece of terrain, uh, and then as long as we're uh, within range of the like, area, um, we don't have to roll for a bravery test. So that is a piece okay. that we uh, picked. Okay, excellent. So uh, otherwise, we're good to go. I'll be setting up my guys first, um, and then Eddie will set his up, and then I actually get to pick which one of us goes first. Uh, which I think is probably going to be Eddie with this, how this battle's working out. Uh, but we'll see what happens in deployment. This is my deployment done. Uh, I've deployed my Thunderers all the way close to the edge over here, uh, just so they're as close to this other quadrant as possible so that I can score it in the first battle round. Um, and then I've got my Arknot Company, kind of same thing except for this northern quadrant. Uh, and I've got my Aether Chemist kind of positioned in a way that it can buff any of my units here on this first turn during Aether Chemist. All right. Um, so I'm deployed. Time for Sylvan at deployment. Eddie here, and so I've already deployed my Sylvaneth, and I put my Hunters here. Uh, I'm looking to push them up into this area and challenge. These guys are worth their five wounds, they're worth two apiece, so they'll actually kind of six models up in here. So it's going to force them to commit more here. Uh, this guy's worth five. I think I can move and charge at the same turn if I can pull it off. And these guys are going to move up as well and try to uh, contest. I think if I pull this off, I can either get three this turn or force them to commit some some uh, movements and stuff to, to at least come out with a tie. With how we're deployed, the invader gets to choose who goes first. I'm going to go first with how we're deployed this time. Which, uh, for you at home, a little Easter egg, the first time we did this with the way deployments worked out, I chose to go second. Um, but I think it just works out a little bit better for me to go first with how it is currently. So with that, let's jump into turn one. With my Aether Chemist, he gets to buff one of my units to reroll ones to wound until my next hero phase. Um, so I'm going to choose my Thunderers here, so they'll reroll wound rolls of one. So we're going to do some movement, and uh, I'll be back with you. Okay, so I've completed my movement. So basically, I moved my Thunderers up. Um, and I moved my engine riggers up, and we're going to try to take out these Kurnoff Hunters here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in one round, but we're going to try to at least soften them up. Um, and then actually not wanting to get entangled up with this Tree Lord Ancient, I actually just kind of fell these guys back, and they're just going to kind of defend my homeland right here. So I'm going to try to just control these two quadrants closest to me for this turn, and I'm going to try to do some damage to his model count so that future turns are easier. Um, so with that, we're going to move forward into the shooting phase. Um, so nobody over here can shoot. It's fine. So I'm going to start off with uh, shooting from these guys uh, into the Colonel Hunter. What's your range on your leader, dude? Uh, just nine inches. Oh, okay. yeah. definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. All right, so these guys get uh, three attacks each with range. Uh, so wait, what's going on now? I'm about to shoot my three Colonel Hunters. Uh, we're going to all out uh, defense, all right? Sure. Take them to three up. All right, so we're gonna hit on threes and wound on fours here. All right, on threes. Okay. Not too bad. And then now on fours, we got four through. 
and they are a rind of one. Four up. All right, so four wounds. Okay, so um, everybody here, all of my thunders are in range except for my guy with the fumigator. So, uh, which he's in range, he just doesn't have line of sight. Because uh, he's within range of this guy, but you can't see him. So, um, anyway, um, we're going to start with the rifles and then we'll move forward to the special weapons teams afterwards. So, I get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then 14 because the guy that's the leader gets two extra shots. So, these are going to be 14 shots here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my three command points and all out attack for the Thunderers. Um, so they're going to get a plus one to their attack, and then they get to re-roll wound rolls of one. Okay, so we are going to hit on threes here. All right, and now we're on fours, re-rolling ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's really good for fours. And uh, that is rend of one. Yep. Rend of one. Four ups. Uh, so that's so three go through. Three, one damage piece? Yep. Uh, Alright, so. Okay, uh, now with the first of the special weapons, uh, we're going to do the uh, Aether Cannon first. So it'll be on threes here. No. Mortar on threes. Yep. And wounding on threes. Rerolling ones from the Aether Kills. And that is a wound. No rent here. Three up. There we go. Yep. All right. Four shots on three. And on threes, rerolling ones. Okay. Two more wounds. Minus one rent. Fours. There we go. There we go. Uh, we're going to my charge phase. Okay. We charge. Uh, we're going to. Unleash hell. hell. Yep. That happens at the end of my charge. Uh, I got seven. Alright, unleash hell. Go for it. Alright, so it's two attacks apiece, so it's four attacks. Hitting on threes. Minus one from unleash hell. Yeah, so. Two. Uh, these look going to be. Uh, actually, those are hitting on. I was looking at the wrong loadout. So these are actually bows, it's, it's hitting on fives. Because it'll be fours up to five. Okay, okay. So just one goes through. Alright. Uh, and then a wound is a three. And it is one rend. Okay. Uh, five up. Good. Okay. So we're going to hit on threes here. Alright. Three go through. We're going to wound on twos. Two wounds. Two rend. This is the phase of six up. Alright. Damage. Uh, that is four damage. All right, Steve. I'm going to attack back using vicious balls. Three attacks. Did no four and one. one. Thank goodness for the rolls. Goodness gracious. Not gonna matter. Nothing. Absolutely not. All right. Well, that is the end of my turn. I've got nothing else to do. Uh, all right, so he survived, so he's going to get the trample underfoot on a four. He's going to do a more wound to your guys, so let's see what he can do. At least he did that. And since we don't score at the end of my turn, we score at the end of the battle round, we will kick it over to uh, Eddie for turn one solo. All right, so um, we go into my hero, um, where I have to pick stuff to do. So yeah, the, we I screwed up big time and just totally went straight through my heroic phase and went straight to movement. So I didn't get to do a heroic action and I didn't do cast a spell. So really screwed myself here pretty hard. Um, can't move my hunters because I took the tangle foot and then actually forgot to do any of the plus ones to the saves anyway. So it was pretty pointless. New additions and new armies. <laughs> and then. Uh, 
I just saw I moved my uh, tree lord back here in hopes of getting this charge off and maybe eliminating these guys and bring up my, uh, my hunter. Uh, I moved these guys into where I can actually have uh, at least two of these models in this area to take this, but also within six inches of my wildwood to get their buff area. Uh, and then I moved my branch witch right here, in, still barely inside of the wildwood to make sure he's still out of line of sight and protected and getting a buff, while also being able to hand out his six the inches AOE, so a three roll one, so it's. So uh, we'll see if I can recover from some of this blunder so far. I really kind of screwed myself early on. Uh, so we're going to go into shooting. Uh, the only guys that I have of any range is the hunters who are currently tied up in combat. Uh, but he can shoot the guys that stand in front of him. And maybe he can actually do something, sir, because uh, I'm not, I haven't done any really good luck with hunters since I've tried to play them so far. Maybe I'm playing it wrong. If I am, guys, please tell me what I'm screwing up. Because I probably am screwing lots of things up because I am very new to this army. But they're cool, so I want to play them. Um, so I'm messing something up, please let me know. So we're going to go ahead and fight with my hunter. He's got range, he's got, um, I know that, and I know because I messed it up last time, and uh, one of the things I screwed up um, is that the hunter can, uh, gets to add one hit, add, add, to one, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by this model. So he actually gets to plus one on his hits. He's got two attacks with his great bow. Uh, hitting on fours, actually hitting on threes, and re-rolling that one because of my witch, and nothing. Uh, but it will get a hit, um, it will wound on a three, and there it is. Alright, well, we'll go over to the tree lord and see if he can't actually do something. Uh, with his 12 inch range, he's going to attack as well. Um, he's got five attacks, and right now... It is going to be on, uh, let's see, this is, the strangle roots are two ups to hit right now. So, strangle roots are two ups to hit, five, two ups. We roll ones because of my priest, thank you. That was a two. Not sure why. Uh, yeah, so all five will hit, uh, and then these will go over to wound, which is threes. Threes to wound. I, I just keep doing that, and that's a lot of ones and twos. At least two of them will get there. Um, so this will be a rend of one. Okay, five bucks. Uh, Donata, how much damage? One damage piece. So that's the, the shooting. Uh, we will move on from shooting and go into charge. And by the surprise of from no one, the true lord is going to charge. All right, let's see what we can get here. Eight inch charge. I think you made it. <laughs> I think so. Um, we're going to slide in just right there like that. Okay, does he do mortal wounds at the end of his charge or anything? No, he gets a monster activity. Um, That's at the end of the charge phase? It is a charge phase. Okay, I'm going to unleash hell then while you I still have You cannot unleash hell. Why not? Because I have a guy with it. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, so that is not an option that you have, and uh, the Tree Lord will go to his monster actions. If you guys are new to this, uh, I'll post a picture here of the new monstrous rampage activities you can do at the end of the charge phase. You know, let's stop. We're going to pick the unit, obviously, in front of me. We're going to stop, and on a two-up, we'll suffer D3 mortal wounds. Uh, I love the new monstrous activities. They're, they're really kind of fun. Alright, so on a two-up, he hits a two-up, so it's D3 mortal wounds. See any wounds it's going to be? Three. Nailed it. That's both of them death. Didn't even need to swing on them. Mm -hmm. Inch. Closest model is them, right? I mean, it has to be, yeah. So he's going to move up three inches and really just kind of take some of the pressure off this hunter. Um, probably not going to do a dang thing. There's hope, right? All right, so at the end of turn one, my engine riggers have been taken off the board. The board. His cut-off hunters have been severely wounded and hamstrung. Um, we both scored two points because I, I control this quadrant here and my baseline squad, uh, quadrant, and same for Eddie over here on the other side of the battle. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do the roll-off and see who gets to take the next turn, and Ty will go to me in this case. So let's go ahead and roll that. Two. Oh! The 
hero phase, uh, my engine, uh, my Aether Chemist, sorry, is going to buff my Thunderer so that they reroll wound rolls more. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move, and then we'll be back with you, and I'll show you where I moved to. Alright, so this is the end of my movement phase. I have moved my Thunderers up to launch more firepower downrange at his guys. Uh, my Aether Chemist ran to be closer to the Thunderers for future turns. And then my Arcanaut Company also ran uh, just to move in and actually make him commit his Dryads up here. Um, and actually it'll be 10 to 10, so potentially neither one of us will score this. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Eddie also has to play his turn. and. A lot of stuff could happen in that time. So, uh, at any rate, that's it for this. Um, we are going to move to my shooting phase, but first, these guys actually ended up within an inch of this. So I need to roll a d6, and on a one, they take uh, d or they take one roll. So close. It was very close, but they did not take. You so. deserve to have taken that one. The, 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 the gall. Of, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Mm. Well, yeah. Just a good clean look. Here we go. Uh, we're gonna do some shooting. Really, I only got my thunders that are in range. Um, and, and you know what? We're just going to pump everything into the Colonel Hunter. I need it to die, and if I split attacks, let's say I split attacks and do four wo or three wounds to him to put into one wound remaining, and then three wounds to the Tree Lord, that's just not worth it. Like, that guy has to die this turn uh, for me to have a chance here. So, Alright, so first we're going to go over the rifles. And uh, I'm going to spend a point for all off attacks, but I don't think it matters. And they're buffed from the Aether uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my three command points and all out attack them. So the rifles hit on two. So. All right. That's a one. And that's a one of the rest hit. Okay. And then this will be on fours. They put buffs that are going once. Yep. My baby kills. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's really good for one, five, five, four. Okay. Seven. Eight B. Uh, negative one. Okay, so four. down to three up to four. Probably dead. Dead. Okay. That's it for me! Because I'm putting everything into the not gonna charge. <laughs> no. No, I'm not. Come on, man. Can you give me a shot. You hear this guy? What I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a Mystic Shield on my, my a Tree Lord. Yep. Uh, and this will go off. I have to roll three dice because of my yep. specific uh, grove. Uh, this will go off on a five. All right. So I will take the six and a five. That's an 11. All right, so Eddie got an 11 on his unbind roll. I get a plus one to this. Probably nothing. Casting roll. Casting roll, yes. Uh, probably not going to be able to do this, but uh, got nothing else in unbind, so negative as it was. That was close. That's a 10. Um, all right, so he will have Mystic Shield um, on him, which will give him plus ones to his saves. Yep. Because I cast a spell, I can, hero, I can heal people, but, you know, all my hunters are dead, so. All right, uh, that, we'll go into movement, so I'll go ahead and move my troops. And uh, we'll see if I can't uh, make some legway here. Okay, so I finished movement here. Um, I went ahead and moved my Tree Lord up in preparations to charge these guys. Uh, I do realize they're probably going to unleash hell and at least eliminate some models. They may be able to bracket him. I don't think they're going to be able to do enough, and I think I have a shot at eliminating that unit. If I do, I have a really good shot at this. Um, yes, he did make me commit my Dryads over here, uh, so I went ahead and brought them in. I'm going to attempt this charge, uh, so if I can, I can eliminate some of his models and maybe take this, this, this area. So if I can manage to take uh, enough models off of both of these groups, I could be able to potentially get three. So I have my guy who stayed back here in the Wildwood. There was really no benefit moving him. Um, 
Yes, I could have gotten moved with these guys and given plus reroll ones to hit, but then I would have potentially been giving up this. And so I need to make sure I got the for sure point here. Um, so it's really, I think it's really going to come down to this turn to see what happens in this game. Yeah. So uh, there was some consideration on my part for redeploying my Thunderbirds here, uh, just to get them further away, make the charge a little bit harder. Uh, but if you redeploy, you can unleash hell with them later. Um, now, it might be correct for me to redeploy these guys. I, I might, maybe I should have, um, so that I can unleash hell on this unit over here. Um, but we'll just have to see. Uh, the Thunderers are kind of the most important thing in the game right now. So we'll see how this turn goes. All right, so we're going to go into shooting. He has a shooting capability. Um, he has a 12 inch range. Uh, five attacks. This is a, a to hit. The hit gets bracketed, but right now he's still full. So we're looking for so two ups to hit. Uh, no rerolling ones because I'm no longer near my witch. Uh, and now we're going to go into wounding and strangle wounds. It's a three up to wound. And so three random one. One damage piece. Yeah, I think any elimination of finals at this point is only going to help. Them. We're going to go ahead and charge here. I desperately need a double one here. I know you do, and I don't want that. I don't have to waste my reroll here. So here we go. An eight inch charge. Uh, he's definitely in. Uh, I'm definitely going to unleash that. Uh, I figured you were. Alright, uh, on fours here. Uh, these are the rifles, and then we'll do the special weapons. Mm. Not the greatest of rolls, but not the worst of rolls either. And they re-roll once because they're still buffed from my uh, injured master. Or eighth of Kenny's All right, so that's two wounds at one ring. Wait, how many? Two. 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 So it's going to be just threes. Uh, yep, I think those double sixes will handle it. All right, um, we'll do my Aether Cannon next. On fours. All right, on twos here. Rerolling one from the Aether Cannon, thank God. All right, that's a win. Minus two rend? Uh, minus one rend, so he'll go up to a four. He's good. All right, uh, mortar. Uh, that's a hit. <laughs> reroll that. Oof. Get my money's worth out of that reroll. There you are. Oof. That All right, uh, now the fumigator, which I haven't fired yet, because uh, that's been arranged. He gets three attacks, normally hitting on threes, hitting on fours because of my shot. On threes. Three, 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 Alright, three wins. Oh. One win. Alright, so regular three up save. Ignoring it. Uh, what's the damage? One. We'll take the one damage. I think he did pretty good coming out of one damage. Yep. Uh, we're gonna try to charge over here. Yep. Uh, let's see it. Eight. Eight's probably pretty good. Eight's probably pretty good. So yeah, eight will do it. We're gonna attempt to prevent them from having a command. So on a three up, they won't get to have the old issue. Yep, all right, so we shut down the commands. Now we're gonna go into the combat phase where he's going to attack. At the start of the combat phase, we pick one enemy within three inches of him. Pick one obviously right there on our dice. One of four of the unit uh, fights at the end of the combat phase after we play with any other against fight. So uh, I need this on a four up. Okay, didn't happen. We're gonna go into uh, his attacks. So the massive impaling talons. One attack. I think it's a special thing with sixes. I'll check that. Out. Get it? I don't. And he doesn't even get the hit. So he blows. There's four attacks here. So uh, we'll be threes and then negatives and positives basically blank each other out. So it's just gonna be three still. Uh, that's good. So threes to hit all hit, and then it's gonna be wounding on threes. Uh, Ouch. One wound with one rend. Nope. 
Goes through. Uh, D6 damage. Five damage. That's pretty savage. All right. So we'll come over to my guys. Um, clearly, I'm gonna fight them next. Yep. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go all out defense on the dryads. Okay. Um, I have command points. I might as well use them. Yep. I feel you on that one. Um, they're gonna all out attack. They can issue the order to themselves, and they're gonna eat their aether gold. All right. So first off, uh, I've got three different weapon profiles. I've got the cutters, the guy with the sky, the sky hook, and then the guy with the sky pike. Let's do this, the gun butt first. This is fours to hit, fives to wound. So threes to hit, fours to wound. Uh, so threes to hit. This is the gun butt. All right, nope, no dice. All right, Sky Pike is gonna be threes and threes, I believe. Yep, threes and threes because of the buffs. Nope, okay, so now the cutters. So that'll be, there's eight of them with cutters. You get one attack each. And these will be on threes and on threes. Three go through. Is it ran? Nope, not ran. All right, so plus ones to save. Um, they have a five up, we're gonna go to a four up. Damage is one of these, I guess. Uh, yep. Drives are going to uh, pile in. Pin attacks. Hitting on fours or plus one, hitting on three. Really good. Wounding on fours. No specialties. Seven left, uh, no rent. Seven wounds. Uh, two passed, so uh, that's five gone. Uh, all right, so first we'll go with the gun butts. Uh, yep, I'm just gonna pile these guys on. Yeah. What's your range on this? One in. All right, of course. I think, it's, I think it's five after this. Nope, four. Four. Uh, one range, no range. Okay, uh, three up to save it. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, all right, we're good to go. All right, uh, the captain has what's called a drill bill, which is basically a pet owl. It gets D3 attacked. Uh, two attacks. Uh, one hits. So at the end of the second battle round, the score is now four to four. Uh, we've got the Thunderers tied up with the Tree Lord here. We've got the Aether Chemist kind of in backup, getting ready to move in to help potentially. Uh, then we've got a knot of Dryads fighting a knot of Argonaut Company. Uh, battle of the uh, you know, erstwhile crappy battle line units over here, saying who's crap here. Um, and then his Tree Lord, or his Branch Witch rather, is still just kind of hanging out scoring points. Um, so that's kind of the state of affairs going into this turn. Uh, this is a super important role to see who gets the next turn. I feel like this, the battle kind of hangs on this. I think if Eddie gets to go again right now with a double turn, I don't think I have much of a chance. Um, I think I still am in the game if I get to go right here. So let's go ahead and roll it off. Tie goes to me. All right, tie goes to me. Six. All right. Well, I couldn't be the six. No. So we're now into my third turn, which I think will prove to be a very decisive turn. He's gonna do his finest hour. Well, actually, there's a reason not to. He can eat his eighth of gold to get plus one wounds anyway. Um, I've got so many ways of getting plus one wounds. <laughs> but yeah, he's gonna do his finest hour. All right, uh, the eighth of chemist is gonna buff uh, these guys. Um, and we actually have been playing it wrong. Uh, they don't get to reroll ones on their wound rolls. We, I just get to add one. So sorry guys. Um, New rules, new addition, and honestly, Eddie and I are both new to these armies. So I'm going to go into uh, my movement phase. I'm done with my movement phase. I'm going to move to shooting. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start with the Argonaut Company over here. So two attacks each, and then the leader guy gets three. So two, four, six, eight, and then nine. We're going to all out defense. You guys, we're gonna, I'm going to spend one of my two command points to all out attack them. They can issue the orders themselves. All right, so they'll hit on three's wound on fours. Thank 
goodness, I'll uh, attempt. Alright, on fours. Oof. Uh, well, nothing. Just one. One goes through. Uh, it's fours normally, or you'll be plus one? That's not the guy. I'll get plus one. Yep, and no rain. So one goes through. So one, one rain? No rain. No rain. Okay, so three up. He's good. I thought this guy's had five up. Oh, you attacked those? I think this yeah. guy's. Oh, they had all attacks, so they went for four up, so. I rolled three. Awesome. I was thinking they or something. Yeah. Uh, so the Aether Chemist gets 3d6 attacks. Wait, what's going on? The Aether Chemist is going to attack him. Okay, yeah, you just need to play five. Uh, 3d6 attacks. Um, so that's 10 attacks. This is with the. He gets plus one to his win. Alright, and then wounding on three. That's with plus one? Yep. So two wounds, two rend each. Two runes going up to fives to save. Nope, that's plus damage. One each. Alright, so we'll go to the Thunderers, and they have two, four, six. Okay, so just uh, three rifles left in the double barrel rifle. So that's uh, eight attacks. And uh, I'll be hitting on twos because Thunderers get plus one uh, when they're within three inches of whatever they're shooting at. Um, okay, that's much better. I'll go through except one. And then they normally wound on fours, they'll be wounding on threes because of the uh, Aether Chemist Bomb. Alright, uh, so that's four through and a random one. Come on, four rocks, baby. Damage? One each. Slowly but surely. Alright, uh, Aether Cannon on threes. Yep, and on twos. Alright, he does wound. Rend of two. Uh, there it is. The Mortar, uh, that's a hit. No, and now the deck sweeper uh, on three. Okay, and on three. Uh, one goes through, one wrench. There it is. And then the fumigator. Oh. So many things. All right, that's all three hit. All three wound. Uh, one wrench. Ouch. Uh, one damage apiece. All right, that's it for shooting. I think we're gonna do try to do D3 damage. Okay. So on two up, we'll do D3 mortal wounds. Oh. At the beginning of the combat phase, pick one enemy on three inches on a four up. Uh, they fight fun fast. That happens on my combat phase. Yeah, it's the combat phase. Well, I guess need to get it off. I didn't get it off last time. Yep. So they fight last. All right. Well, then that makes my choice easy. I'm gonna fight over here. Yep. And they're gonna all out the fence. Cutters. On fours. And on fours. Yep, that's one wound. No rain. Uh, we'll be five going down to four because of a hot defense. So fours. Nope. One there. Alright, and now the sky park. On fours. And on fours. Yep. Rend of two. No, rend of one. Sorry, rend of one. It's eliminating. Just five ups. There we go. Got it. That was D3 damage too, so that was one of our most clutch. So I'm gonna go to combat, and I can do. I, I have both of mine to go before yours. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what order I go in, but so we're gonna go ahead and go over here anyway. Um, so he should be in his lowest bracket? Uh, with nine, he is second lowest. So he's gonna have uh, one attack for the massive talons. I'm hoping for a six here, but he will be hitting on threes. Uh, they're going to all out defense. Yeah, a six will do d6 mortal wounds. So here's hoping on a six. Uh, six, baby. Six. No, a five. It will hit. The wound is bracketed and will go down to threes. Three's the wound. Yep. Uh, random two. Five up because they all have defense. Nope. One damage. Two can blow down to two attacks. Threes and threes, so here's hoping for some actual hits. I need some damage here. I cannot stop rolling out of the box, but those are both hits. Um, uh, did you do the minus one from the fumigator? It's fours, that's about it. Um, so, uh, threes. One rend of one. Okay, four up. Oh! That was D6 damage. We're gonna go ahead and go over here to the dryads. Racking talons, so the dryads are gonna have 11 attacks, hitting on threes with a plus one. That's pretty good. Uh, wounding on 
fours though, however. I think, um, let's see, that's five, no rent. All right, so we'll do gun butts first. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six gun butts. Four and threes because the eight. That's about average. Three. All right, two wounds, no ring. Some threes, give me some threes. All right, now the drill bill gets D3 attacks. Two attacks. Fours and fours. Finest hour. His finest hour. Okay. And I have to gamble a little here. I think if I just sit here and go blow to blow with you, you're going to kill me with your shots eventually. Um, but if I can eliminate this squad and then I can score two to your one this round, I can take two. Absolutely. And if you're just down to your one guy, I think I have a chance at winning this. But yeah, I think your favorite one is this one. If I sit back here and just play shoot, shoot, games my yeah. guy's so nerfed I just don't think he's gonna survive another attack I know he won't so down two wins at this point so I have to try to gamble uh, and I'm gonna see what I can pull off here so I'm gonna I'm gonna be, beast beast my my leader up all right exactly. so from that point I'm going to try to cast a spell sure might as well just smite is that what it is no, no it's arcane bolt that's the range uh, that's 12 inches, so... They're in range, yeah. Because it's like... Yeah, so, um... So that was the point of doing the else. I know he has a 9-inch range ability, yeah, but, like... Not range. Uh, not range for that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to Arcane Bolt. Uh, and this is a... Caster value of 5. And I roll 3d6s to try to make this happen. Uh, so, an 11... I'm going to try to unbind. Unlikely, but can't do it if I don't. Nope. D3 mortal wounds. <laughs> One. Okay, so I can pick a unit holding 18 inches of him. He's definitely with 18 inches. He's just out of 12. And I can heal D3 wounds and I'll get it. So, so we're going to see if we can't get this off. This is a gnarl, gnarl root ability. Uh, so we'll have two wounds removed. Uh, which is relevant. So that'll end the uh, hero phase. Um, now we're going to go into the movement. We're not moving these guys, obviously, but we are going to move my leader here, uh, who has a seven inch move. Uh, we're going to have to get brave here. If I can eliminate them and manage to take this one uh, and this one, and you just have the one, I, I think it's my best shot to win this game. So we're going to push for it. Let's see what happens. Uh, the only guy has a shooting ability is my tree lord. Uh, it's definitely within range. <laughs> Does it have a minimum range? Uh, no. It's five attacks, uh, but the hits the hits bracketed on this. So the strangle roots bracket is down to a five ups to hit. Six ups. Uh, they get minus one. He gets minus one on his attack rolls from the range. Okay, uh, but we will be rolling ones because he's just within range of my attack here. So uh, six ups. That one. And it's a grim one. Charge phase. Obviously, we're charging a guy here. This is a gamble, and I know it. Uh, it doesn't pay off. It's basically, it's going to come down to this right here or not. So we're going to uh, loosely, hopefully, make the five-inch shark. Yeah. So uh, that should be good. Uh, yes, five inches will definitely get it. Uh, we'll move in to this guy. So at the end of charge, we will do the monstrous activity. We are going to try to shut down commands on this. A three up. Uh, no commands can be given to these guys, um, and I don't get it. Start the combat phase. Tree Lord will attempt his uh, impale. Uh, and on a six, they'll go last. I'm sorry, on a four, they'll go last. That's not that impale. It's groundbreaking stop. So, guard shaking stop. So, on a four, they'll go last. Uh, let's see if that happens again. It does not. Do I take the nerfed Tree Lord or do I take the buff leader? I think I still have a better shot at doing the damage with the Tree Lord. Now, I will be all out attacking because that leader is right there. He can give up. So Tree Lord will be basically ignoring this negative one that these guys give out apparently. Um, he's gonna be this is one attack with massive compelling talents, three up. I need a six here. 
No, I can't. He rolls ones though. Thank gosh. Uh, I can't even roll higher than a two. All right. Sweet. Uh, sweeping blows is the one that's nerfed down to two attacks. Um, hits on threes. Both of those will hit. Wounding on threes. Both will wound with a brand of one. Four up save because of all that attack. Uh, one goes through. D6 damage. Alright, let's see. D6, baby! Five damage. Alright, I'm gonna fight with my company over here. Yeah. Alright, uh, cutters. So we're gonna go down to one. Alright. One wound from the cutters. No rin. No rin, so uh, down to fours. Alright, sky pike. Uh, Branch Rich, he will be hitting, uh, normally on four, but he's negative one. Hitting on five, he's going to be rolling one, he's going to be two attacks. Makes it five here. One. Uh, and now I'm going to be wounding on a three. Uh, I'm just missed that completely. Uh, I love rolling out of the box. All right, so does wound with no rin. All right, uh, three up. All right. Uh, one attack coming from the yeah, the little snakey. Little, not snakes, like a worm. Whatever caterpillar thing with it. Uh, hold on, it tells me. Uh, a bitter grub. It's a bitter grub it's with snapping mandibles. Okay. Uh, mandible away, my friend. Mandible away. Uh, one attack. Uh, hitting on five because of the negative. Rerolling the ones. So I, oop, I need to hit. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, the wounds is really high to fours. No, I'm sorry. And yeah, that guy did nothing. So I'm glad he came along. Um, <laughs> uh, they're gonna fight back. Uh, all right, into the tree lord, obviously. Fours. And fours. Yep, no rin. Three up. Wow, wow, I am not loving the box. I can't make it. One damage. Chow. Is that it? <laughs> I've got three models. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, we're gonna go over here. Yep. Finish bottom. Six guys left, so 12 attacks, 13 because the leader. These are going to be hitting on. Hitting on fours, but actually plus one, so it's hitting on three. No two rolls. That's a really good roll. Uh, those guys have had the same rolls, aren't they? That's true. <laughs> Every time they've attacked, it's been good. Um, wounding on fours. Wounding on fours. And you had to say something. <laughs> Four. Four with no rend, and I can knock that guy again. Uh, yeah, that's enough to kill. All right, so we're at the end of battle round three here, and the Tree Lord has just about taken care of the Thunderers. Uh, they are in a bitter fight to the death. Uh, the Aether Chemist is still kind of just hanging out, shooting things, and the Argonaut Company has bit the dust. Um, so, uh, at the end of this battle round, the Normal Root Vanguard score three additional points to my zero for this battle round. Um, so that brings the score to seven to four, going into the fourth battle round. And I think whoever gets to go here first, again, is crucial. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, if you go first, the game is pretty much over. Uh, the only question is how many of my guys are going to die before the end of the fifth battle round at that point. Uh, if I go and I can kill this guy, maybe I can make something happen. Um, but it's not looking good for me so far. But let's go ahead and roll initiative. Tie goes to me. Four. Four. Alright. Okay, just for those of you keeping track at home, uh, at the end of the last round of the Battle Shock phase, I spent my last command point for them to automatically pass their morale, the uh, Thunder Rivers, that is. Uh, now we're in the hero phase, my turn four. He's gonna buff the Thunderers to give them plus one to win. Alright. Uh, so, no movement? Yeah, I'm not gonna move. Okay. Uh, well, actually, he probably should move up, because he can't score this quadrant, so... He's gonna move into this quadrant. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Um, shooting. Alright, this is the number of attacks for my Aether Chemist. That is a lot of attacks. That is 16 attacks. That is an excellent start. Okay, here we go. Fours and fours. Actually, he still has his eighth or gold, so he's gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, for plus one to win. So three, two. Because I can do that whenever. 
and uh, it is well. It gives me two extras. All right, so uh, that is six go through, rend of two. Six, five up. Needing all of them. He's gonna leave the, no, he's nine, so he needs most of them. <laughs> Three five ups, but he takes three, three which is how much help he has left. Yep, so he's done. All right. Uh, I'd like to roll to do um, <laughs> explosions. <Yeah. laughs> My monster explodes and kills everybody. All right. Um, the thunderers are going to shoot into the branch, which. Uh, okay. Um, you know I should have just all defended with them. I don't know why I did not. Um. But I will, I will all out defend with him. All right. Uh, so hitting on twos. These are the two rifle shots that throw up. Um, one hit and one wound, one rend. Okay. Deck sweeper on threes. All hit. Yes. On threes. Uh, two, one rend each. Still right. so on fives. Damage, two, uh, one each. Wow. All right, and the Fumigator uh, on threes. Actually, I think it's on twos, because I think it naturally hits on threes, and uh, because I'm within three inches, he gets a plus four. So to hit threes, so he'll be to hit twos here. All right, uh, three hits. Three to wound. Uh, one wound, AP one. So fives again. One wound. Shooting's done. <laughs> charge moves. Yep. Uh, charge. That is a nine. Uh, so yeah. So charge right in here. Uh, I'm gonna roll the dice to see if he takes a mortal wound or D3 mortal wounds actually. No one. No one. That's it. Uh, happened all night. You know, you keep playing with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I guess you're attacking with them, or you're attacking? Yeah, yeah, I'm attacking with them. All right, so three attacks, fours and fours. Nothing. Your turn. Oh, wow. Didn't expect that. I thought he was going to be dead. Okay. Oh, guys are not good at melee. Branch, <laughs> um, which, it's a quick difference since he heard the axe to the attack characteristic, so... Uh, just with the sight, so we'll go from two attacks to four attacks. We're just gonna leader on leader, we're gonna all out attack. Okay. Um, so it'll be threes to hit, negative one because of the yep, so back to fours, but uh, you're rerolling ones because it's on R. So fours to hit, rerolling ones. Wounding will be threes to wound. Threes to wound. Ooh, all three wound, no AP. Uh, I'll go through. Two damage piece. He's dead. Boss leader on the boss leader. Hold it off. Yep. That's the end of my turn. My leadership is going to use this thing to heal itself. Yeah, absolutely. So you, well, 2d6 has got to get under his bravery. Yeah. Get now, his bravery is only 7, so this is relevant. I need to roll below a 7 to have a chance to heal this. And he didn't, so. Uh, he gets one back. He gets regardless. one back. Yeah. So he will go down to two, two loss damage. Um, then we will go into spells. I'm going to try to cast Arcane Ball. Uh, 3d6, uh, meeting a 5. Uh, let's see how it happens here. Yep. Got Ooh, I'm sure glad I rolled 3 because those two ones would have hurt. So one mortal wound. Um, yeah, one mortal wound onto them. Okay, so d3 wound is going to heal himself. For one more wound. Um, that's going to be relevant. Movie phase. Yeah, we're going to see if we can't get these guys. I know I can't. More inches to the. All right, charge phase. No, nothing. Combat. Yeah. <laughs> and my my monster's not aligned for charge phase yeah. stuff, so uh, we go to combat, and my hero's gonna swing away. We're gonna all out attack. So the branch, which uh, is injured, so he's gonna be getting four attacks. Uh, he's gonna be normally. Up and down because it's negative, so it's the so force to hit. Right? Yep. Uh, I'll attack this. Alright, so we roll that one. So. Yep. Roll it. Um, and then there's going to be three uh, So two wounds with no range. Okay. 
what cuts her? Two damage. Jeez. Got the snapping mandibles. One attack. Of course. It hits, and it's wounding on four. Yeah, negative one. Oh. Nope. One damage. All right, well, I think we can wrap it up. You're going to get obviously get your guys to the battlefield edge to complete your quest and uh, win the game. Well, we will see you guys in the wrap up. All right, Mason here. So we're going to do our wrap up, our uh, aftermath sequence, as it were. Um, I've got the book open if you want to follow along, page 314. Um, so I earned five glory points from this. I'm going to spend one of them on my quest. So functionally, I'm going to have nine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll my 2d6 for the injury roll for my Aether Chemist since he went down. Um, and I got a 7, which is a major injury, um, which means he will start with one uh, wound allocated the next time I use him. So that's unfortunate, but it could be infinitely worse. Um, next, we're going to move over to my other guys. Um, so I need... 10 dice, because I have to roll a dice for each one of my models that were slain in a unit. Um, so we're going to start with my Arcanaut Company. <coughs> Actually, you know what? We're going to start with my Thunderers, uh, because I can only re-roll once, and I would rather use a re-roll on a Thunderer than an Arcanaut Company. Um, so that is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so each one of these that come up as one is bad juju for me. Alright, that's out of the box. And that is no ones. So my Thunderers are all intact. Which is good for me. Alright, next we will do the uh, three Endrin Riggers. No ones there, so they're fine. And now finally we will do the ten Arcanaut Company. That is cocked. It was actually, there was a one there, and then the three was cocked, so I'm going to put this one back. Well, actually, I don't have any other ones, so I'm just going to pay a command point to reroll that, and I'll reroll the cocked one and the... Okay, none of my Arcanaut Company gone either. Um, so they are good to go. Um, next, I pick a unit that is my favored warrior, and they get D6 renown points. Um, so that's going to be my Thunderers, and they get two renown points. Woohoo! All right, <clears throat> and then finally, uh, we're going to roll um, to see what my territory is for my exploration roll. Uh, this little green dice here is gonna be my 10th dice. And we got 21, uh, which is going to be Wildlands, which increases my monster limit by one, which is amazing, because Carriage and Overlords are known for their monster units. All right, and uh, so next we add, we recuperate, um, and we reinforce. I don't have to do any of that. Um, well, I do need to add some stuff. Uh, I'm definitely going to do that, but I'm probably going to do that off camera. Uh, the next time you guys see these guys on the channel, they will almost certainly have a boat with them. But uh, I need to figure out which one. At any rate, we will see you at the end. All right, Eddie here. I'm going to do my aftermath sequence for my Gnarl Root Sylvaneth. Um, and uh, the first thing I need to do is earn some, earn some glory points. So uh, I did, I was fighting in a battle, so I did get the five glory points for that. Um, I did win a major victory, so that's going to be three major points. So, and then one more for. Uh, the warlord actually surviving and taking part. So that's going to give him nine for the battle, uh, which would put him to five with start. So we're going to be 14 glory points at this point, which is pretty good. All right. Um, all right. So uh, now we're going to move on to injury rolls, and I have to make an injury roll for my tree lord. And uh, actually, just to point this out, this is an, a, like my third attempt to record this. And I've already rolled this roll for his injury roll, uh, and it is a five, which is a. Uh, critical injury. So uh, his critical injury means he will have to start with a D3 wounds allocated that cannot be negated or healed, uh, which is pretty brutal for this 12 wound model. Um, hopefully I can just get like a one. That'd be great. Um, all right, so we're going to move on from there and let's do some casualty rolls. All right, so casualty rolls, I'm going to be rolling uh, for my hunters and then for my dryads that survived four of them did die. Something roll four casualty rolls there and three over here. I'm going to roll for my hunters, uh, since all three of them died. Uh, I'm going to have to roll three of these and hoping on no ones. Uh, of course, I do get a one, so the casualty score is going to increase by one. So we're going to spend one of my 14 glory points to go down 13 to re-roll this one. Uh, and he survived. So uh, we'll, we'll eliminate the ability to get a casualty there, because one of these models removed is pretty brutal. Uh, all right, let's go over here to my dryads, uh, which I did have four die. And so we're going to roll four 
of these. And oh, wow, that well, you know what? We still went to rolling one, but they went everywhere there. So I'm trying to watch your camera while you while you roll. Uh, I did get one. I'm not gonna spend a glory point. Well, well you actually can't. Uh, you can only do that one time. That's that. fine anyway. So uh, these guys will have a capture point. So whenever they start the next battle, they'll end up with nine. There's a way uh, you can you can recruit these guys, and we'll look at that. And I'll probably off camera. Uh, and you can also hold them out for a battle for an increased chance to bring guys back. Do you know that? Uh, so we go from that, we go to gain renown points, and so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, survive in the battle, right? And so I'll get one renown point for the, the two that survived. Uh, it, it, he gets a renown point, but he's already going to start off at 10 because he's the commander and he's got the, art, the uh, command ability and artifact and stuff. Uh, so yes, I'll go up to 11, but I don't really see the benefit there. Uh, but these guys... Uh, we'll go up to, uh, with, they'll, get a, they'll get a renown point for surviving the battle. Uh, my favorite warrior, I'm going to pick uh, my tree lord as my favorite warrior. Uh, and we're going to roll a d6 to see what kind of renown points he can manage to get. Uh, and he got three, so uh, he's got three, which is still put him in an untested warrior. Uh, well, we're getting closer, so that's okay. We just really get him the veteran status. Get a renown point for... Um, in our narrative play, um, which was what having one model in, in, in uncontested territories, and since the table, uh, it was basically my leader and these guys. So they'll end up with two two renown points, and uh, he'll go another point to twelve. But I don't really see the benefit of a leader is already over ten. Uh, all right, so that goes from that. Because heroes, it's 15. Sorry, it's 15. I'm sorry, I was saying 10. He starts up with 15 because he's already got the uh, the mighty hero status, so he can get the. So he's at 17, but really doesn't do any good for your commander to be going up. Probably don't even should be rolling for him, but eh, it is what it is. Okay, and so uh, complete quest. I did complete my quest, uh, so I will be able to roll twice on the the uh, territories when I'm searching here in just a minute. My exploration roll. I get two of those. Uh, and I will end up maxing out territories straight off the bat. Um, we'll have to worry about spending glory points for any of my management strongholds and stuff later on. Right now, we're just going to go ahead uh, and roll on these exploration territories. As you can see the chart here on page 322 if you want to follow along. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and roll uh, 2d6. I'm going to use two different die, uh, and this orange one will be my 10, and the three will be my singles. Okay, and so... I got a 62, and a 62 is a specialty territory where I will pick uh, one of these uh, where I'll be able to um, increase stuff. So uh, I've already increased my, my hero, right? My wizards by one. I've already got arcane waypoint. Yeah, I, you know what? I might as well just go ahead and, and I know at some point I'm gonna need at least three wizards. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another arcane waypoint. Um, so I have another wizard. I have, I have three slots for wizards now. Uh, and let's see what my second roll is going to be. Uh, and so that's a 42. And a 42 is an ancient road. So I'll be able to increase my ally units also. So I'll have, um, I don't have any allies at this point, but if I want to bring some along, I'll have two slots for them. And then I have three slots for wizards. Other than like maybe adding units or recuperating units, which we'll do off camera and we'll kind of let you know what we did with them when we, next time these guys show up on camera. So thanks uh, for, for, for the, uh, you know, paying attention and watching some, some, me roll a few dice here. Uh, and we'll see you in the wrap up. Get all hyped up and be positive and like, yeah, man, they'll, they will never even know the dumpster fire that we had today. <laughs> Try to record this video. we told about 17 times this video. <laughs> That stupid tag. It's it like, just wants to be famous. It's trying to all be, always be in the damn video. It's trying to impress John Clock is what it's trying uh, to do. I don't fucking believe it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all wrapped up here. We've done our aftermath sequence. Uh, it was a fun game. Uh, I probably should have brought boats, you know? Yeah, I don't think you know, KO works very well <laughs> without the boats. Uh, I probably should have brought more trees. Uh, they work better sure. with them. You had uh, more trees than I had boats. That's why you won. That is true. I had more trees than boats. Log it. It's in the record books. It's canon now, fellas. Yeah. Trees beat boats. Unless, what? but boats are kind of made out of trees. Not your boats. Well, we don't know what's under that metal. <laughs> At any rate, uh, thank you guys for bearing with us. It was not the cleanest of games. We made tons of mistakes. Uh, I'm sure there's mistakes that we don't even know about yet. Um, we had a little snafu with the camera, as we've alluded to, and... Uh, We've been at this all day, but we desperately wanted to get this video out. We're super excited for the Path to Glory rules, and we wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, 
Please, any criticisms or suggestions you have, leave them down below. Uh, you can hit that subscribe button if you want more content just like this. Uh, we're also going to do Warcry. We have Blood Bowl coming soon as well as Battletech. Um, and Eddie, why don't you tell them ways they can get in touch with us? Yeah, so uh, down below you'll have a link to our Discord. You can go in there. We're in there all the time. Shoot us a message, talk to us. You know, you can always contact us and always in the comments. We're always trying to reply to those whenever you give us something. Uh, and there's an email down there if you just want to do some private messaging. Please keep it, you know, PG and family appropriate. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, you know, excited to have you guys along. We're really excited for these videos. And uh, also, just to let you know, down below here there will be some links. Those links will give you access to Amazon. Those are affiliate links. Um, click those links if you're interested in anything that we utilize for these videos. Uh, if you're not and you're interested in anything, anything off Amazon, you can click those links and still buy whatever you want. It's like 24 hours, I think so. Um, and we'll get a small percentage of whatever you pay for. It costs you nothing extra. And that little bit extra money that we get comes into our channel. We put it right back in the channel, uh, upgrading our factions, getting more warbands, getting some more stuff for here if we can use for this. Uh, this whole new Age of Sigmar 3rd edition, which we're excited for. Uh, and, you know, just new games like, hey, Blood Bowl. Guess what? Thanks, guys. Uh, but for, for all the, pre the stuff you've given us so far, just keep doing it, keep supporting us, and we'll keep growing. Thanks, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.